Well, good afternoon, folks. We have another budget folder review today. Another budget folder where you get more than what you pay for, in my opinion. What we're talking about today is the Gonzo G745. Hang around and we'll go over it together. Welcome back, folks. Thanks for choosing to spend your time with me today. I do appreciate it very much. Like I said, we have the Gonzo G745. This one is in their blaze orange scales. It does come in black as well. Um, just get some of the particulars out of the way real quick. It is 440C steel. You know, it is a lighter weight steel. It is what they would consider a cheaper steel, at least some folks. But that being said, my experience in the past with 440C, as long as that heat treat is done perfectly, 440C can be an extremely tough steel. I'm going to leave a link to review of an Intrek Forester that is in 440C that I did probably six or eight months ago maybe a little bit more at this point that is absolutely excellent i beat the tar out of that knife and it did not even blink but anyway with that being said this review is not about that intrek forester it is about this gonzo g745 this is an excellent little blade i've been using this on a daily basis for at least a month and i have to say it has not even blinked at work i cut a lot of wires you know a lot of people consider that abuse and i, I will agree with them cutting straight through that copper wire it's not the best thing to do with a knife but i do that quite frequently just out of laziness and convenience this knife while i've had to hone it up quite often at the same time it holds an edge relatively well for 440c and it does get the job done there before we get too far into this i do have something a little bit different a little bit special planned for this so i'm going to run through my portion of the review and then we're going to talk about that special aspect at the end just real quick here folks from pommel to tip you're looking at eight and a half inches the cutting edge is approximately well it's just shy of four inches about just over three and three quarters three and seven eighths something like that the handle itself is four and three quarters inches long. The blade width is an inch and an eighth. The steel, it's got a false edge on it on the top. So you're looking at about an eighth of an inch wide on the steel. But like I said, it does have that false edge up here. <clears throat> so in the, at the center of the thickness, you're looking at an eighth of an inch thick. It is super easy to open, super easy to close, yet it locks up nice and tight there is just a little bit of wiggle with a lot of force basically everything I can put into it just a hair of a wiggle there but you can you can't see any separation in the locking mechanism itself that is actually the steel itself bending the action is extremely slick the detent recess for the closing mechanism is strong it hasn't it hasn't gotten any weaker in the month or so that I've been using it on a daily basis as you can see there is a minor very smooth amount of jimping here honestly I don't even notice it that jimping carries through to the handle again i don't even notice that either it's like it's not even there uh, I, it doesn't aid with anything but it doesn't take anything away either the knife itself it is tip down carry only unfortunately you can't switch the clip around to make it point down carry but it does have a reversible clip so if you're a lefty it will work for you also it does have a lanyard hole one thing i do want to point out about that lanyard hole is that when i first got it it comes with like an emergency whistle attached via a lanyard first thing i did is i took that off and i gave it to my son because i don't want a lanyard on my pocket knife and uh, just from a parental perspective um, don't ever give an emergency whistle to your five-year-old son my ears are still ringing but uh anyway as far as the weight goes it does feel a little bit heavy but not like cumbersome by any means it is just over a quarter of a pound, 0.3 pounds, give or take a little bit. By and large, my main activity for any EDC blade, especially a pocket knife, is cooking. Whether it be out in the yard playing with my kids, you know, cutting up an apple or skinning an apple for them. Or if I'm in the kitchen making dinner and just need a knife real quick, just, you know, pull it out of my pocket and start chopping up vegetables, meat, you know, whatever, whatever is needed for making dinner. Or if I'm out making food at camp or something like that, it's easy just to pull this out, have it as a secondary blade so I don't have to worry about dirtying up my main bushcraft blade or something. So anyway, all that to say, by and large, the main activity for any EDC folder for me is going to be cooking of some sort. And given the blade profile, of this the geometry it is what looks like a high saber or very it may slightly be convex i can't really tell by feeling it but it does have a secondary convex on here it is a slicer it was born to slice for food prep it works really well what is an edc folder review without opening a little bit of mail especially a special package such as this ah. see what we have in here careful not to show the address here <laughs> you'll be seeing this just a i don't know a little bit on this channel here sometime soon just for those that don't know this is the bush bat it's a collaboration between chris tanner from prepared mono 101 uh shane wink and bark river knives a little feather sticking here 
Now I am finding the thumb ramps to get in the way, but there is no other way to really open this blade easily without having those thumb ramps. And this blade was, get away from me honeybee, this blade was not really designed, at least I wouldn't think, specifically for this. It's more of an EDC style blade. All in all, not bad. Alright, will it strike a ferro rod? Not the best I've ever used. Not bad at all. Just real quick, my thoughts on the knife, you know, it will feather really well, it will do very light batoning, it's not something I make a huge habit out of, but I wanted to point out that that lockup is nice and stout, it does hold up to some abuse. The 440C, the heat treat does seem to be pretty good, um, it does hold an edge very well for not a huge long amount of time, but it will hold up to some abuse, it will get back to hair popping sharpness with just a quick run, run down on, on a strop. And where it really shines, in my opinion, is in the kitchen. It just does everything I need it to do there. It is an excellent slicer. It's because it's in my pocket, it's nice and convenient. That coating makes it really easy to clean. You know, I just really like the knife. Now, you guys are wondering, what is so special or what is so different about this review? It has seemed very much the same as usual. The gist of it is, the last Gonzo review I did was extremely divisive. A lot of you guys hated it just because, you know, it's a cheaper Chinese model or you hated the steel or you hated the fact that, you know, a lot of their knives are copies of other mainstream uh, style blades. Other folks really liked it. They liked the affordability of it, they liked what they got for their money, and they liked the fact that, at least in my opinion and their opinion as well, that it's well built. So, how this is different, I'm calling out some help. I want to send this on to another YouTuber. I don't care if you have one subscriber or 500,000. If you want to review this knife, just say you're in or something below, and I want to send this to you in one week. I will do a random comment generator thing and pick somebody else. But the deal is, if you want this, you have to do a review on it and give honest feedback. When I say honest feedback, I mean honest feedback. If you hate it, say so. If you like it, say so. Gear Best sent this out for my opinion. Now I want to pass this on to one of you guys, not because I don't like it, but because the last video I posted on a Gonzo Blade, like I said, it was extremely divisive, so I want some more opinions out there. I want to see what you guys think of this, at least one guy out there. Unfortunately, I can't provide one for everybody who wants to do a review of one, but I want to hear your thoughts on video, and what I'm going to do is when you post that video, I'm going to put a link at an annotation right here. I'm going to have the blank set up in the, in the video right now. It's Itself, awaiting a link to your video. Now I know that discounts a lot of you guys out there because I know most folks probably don't post videos to their YouTube channel. If you don't want to do that but you still want to be included, then I will make you a deal. If you're willing to make a good thorough written up review of this blade with pictures the whole nine yards, I will host it on my website and I will put the link again right here. So anyway, like I said, go ahead and just say you're in, say I want to be included, I'd like to review the knife, etc, etc. And a week from today, I will do a random comment number generator thingy, and we will find a winner. I'll get this sent out, and we will await your review. Alright, this has probably turned out longer than I wanted. The price point on this blade is about 15 bucks, 20 bucks, something like that. As I've paid attention to the prices on GearBest.com, that price has kind of moved up and down a little bit, but there will be a current link down in the description of this video. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for being here today. I do appreciate your time very much. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it very much. Also, there's a subscribe button right down here. If you haven't done so yet, I invite you to make use of that and hang around for a little while. And also, guys, hit up the comment section. I know I've been kind of MIA from there lately, but I am slowly catching up from being gone from vacation and blade show. I would appreciate hearing your thoughts on this knife, the concept of this. Also, I would like to hear from you guys about what you consider to be budget as far as a blade goes. Whether it be folder, fixed blade, listed out, you know, if you think a budget folder, you know, for it to be budget, it should be under $25 or under $15. Or for a fixed blade, it should be under $50 or $30. Whatever equates to you to be a budget blade. Please let me know there. I'm trying to put together a more robust list of budget gear videos. So I want to make them relevant to your budget. Anyway, thanks again for being here today. I do appreciate it very much. And I will see you next time. I hope you guys have a great day.